Hello again, it's Phil. Hi, I'm Esther. So today we're going to talk more, uh, we're going to use big words and fancy technical language because we're going to talk about a specific condition that we see. So mm -hmm. this might be not so much for just our random patients and the general public. I think this is going to be more relevant to our medical colleagues, uh, GP, surgeons, physios, chiropractors. Today we're going to talk about a condition called Dorsal midfoot interosseous compression syndrome. <laughs> Quite a mouthful. <laughs> it is. <laughs> so what it is, it's a condition that it's exactly what it says it is. It's a compression or a, an interosseous compression of the dorsal midfoot. So dorsal meaning top, midfoot meaning the middle of the foot. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> compression meaning obviously bones and they're compressing. So it's a common finding we see. Now, um, credit to Kevin Kirby, he's a podiatrist from uh, California in the US, um, who I believe he thought of the term because it was something that, a pattern of pathology that we often see as podiatrists, and these are all his fancy, fancy diagrams. So, pain in the, pain on the top of the midfoot is quite a common finding, and often it will be dismissed as, you know, some arthritis or some, you know, wear and tear in the joints, and that is definitely true. But on a short-term basis, we can actually see the way the foot functions causing pain in that area as well, with or without you know, arthritis. Um, so the way this problem presents is it's, it's a pain in the, the top of the foot, particularly on the inside of the foot in through this area. So the bones that we're interested in are obviously between the talus and the navicular, the navicular and the cuneiforms and the metatarsal. So all through this area, it's susceptible to this tissue stress. So now the way that it happens is mainly in that when the foot pronates, particularly in the sagittal plane, you can see the way the foot collapses like that. It causes an internal compression of the dorsal joint surfaces. And these pictures here show that. So the joint itself is compressing quite a lot at the top. And that presents as pain uh, in that area for sure. Um, and over time it will cause you know a, a sort of a permanent effect on the, the joint in that area the cartilage and, and whatever you'll often see over time some, some lipping and spurring so if you take an x-ray in this direction you'll see some spurring in those joints so uh, but in the short term we call that dorsal, dorsal um, midfoot interosseous compression syndrome when someone comes in and says oh, look i've just started getting this pain in this area so generally the finding is either the foot looks very pronated, so the foot will be quite collapsed in that frontal plane there, or the position that it's in, when we do various tests to see what um, degree of force is required to supinate or to, to lift the arch, it's very high. So a foot doesn't have to be flat to be at its at a, in a pathological state, so there's tissue stress in that, in that resting position. Yeah. So um, I would keep that in mind with any patients that have pain in that area. It's definitely worth assessing um, if there's actual palpable pain along those. And there's also a test you can do to actually forcefully plantar flex to see if putting that tension on those ligaments, dorsal ligaments, causes pain as well. Okay, so that was a bit complicated, but pain in that area, we see a lot of. Now, the most important question, how do we fix it, Esther? So what's the first things we usually get happening? Um, so the first thing that I probably would try on a patient with um, this condition would be uh, strapping of the foot, mm -hmm. so low dye taping, um, basically to um, prevent the arch from collapsing yeah. and um, that compression, um, preventing that compression of the midfoot joint. So yeah. we'll trial that. And how quickly would you know if that's going to work? Like you, um, within a week? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We usually ask them to come back in for a review um, and if that works that's really good and then um, we'll go along the lines with um, custom orthotic therapy. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Um, really getting good conformity between the orthotic and the foot is important with this condition so if you just put some generic orthotic in that's not going to really particularly um, with the first ray here the big the first metatarsal if we can't get that to plantar flex well it, it we we'll just find it's not particularly effective. So custom orthotics is usually what we try and aim for yeah. with this, yeah. So in combination with orthotic therapy to actually prevent the midfoot collapsing, we need to look at the relationship between the muscles uh, length and strength as well. So you can sort of see here, if the heel bone itself, if, if there's excessive tension in the, um, 
Achilles tendon through the calf muscles, if they're tight, it's going to cause the calcaneus to, to plant a flex, which is going to increase that compression at the midfoot. So definitely working on calf um, stretches. stretches. Yeah, yeah, that's really, really important. And also looking at modifying footwear. So if this is happening in someone who's wearing a really flat footwear all the time, we'll often get a bit of a heel raise underneath, whether that's going from a flat shoe to shoe with a bit of pitch you know, in joggers, yeah. um, or adding, you know, custom making a bit of a raise in the heel. Um, yeah, that's that can be helpful as well, along with orthotic therapy. We'd never really do that on its own for this problem. Yeah. Yeah. What else do we do for this problem? It's probably a pretty good yeah, pretty summary. Good treatment process. Yeah. yeah, but it's it's not a commonly, it's not a term that's used much outside of podiatry because it's quite a specific condition. So yeah, we just want to throw it out there as another thing to consider and um, just let you know that's what we're looking for if we see a patient with, with pain in that area. Um, the prognosis is really good. We'll find people will get a big reduction in pain really quickly and they like that a yeah. lot. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> people can return, return back to activity. So yeah. a usual protocol. So if we had an active person who's playing a lot of sport, getting pain in this area, we'd look at orthotic therapy, probably a two week period of getting them used to their orthotics, re reduce their activities during that period. And then when their symptoms are big, you know, big improvements so 50 to 60, 70% improvement, then we get them to increase their activity levels and they can keep their pain levels can stay quite low there. Okay, well, thank you for watching. Hopefully that made some sense. Yes. <laughs> um, and if you send us a patient with this problem, we, will, we would love to fix them. Yeah. But thank you for watching. See you. See you later.